So we're going to start with Tim because actually of the techniques we've talked about, it may be the most straightforward. I'm not going to say it's the easiest because it, it's certainly powerful, but it may be the most straightforward. So as we, as we shine that beam of electrons on the surface, as Jeff mentioned, we're actually rastering it right and left, up and down uh, in, a, in a pattern. And at each point, we're looking at the uh, signal that comes out. And that signal can be in a variety of different forms. If the electron goes through and uh, you know doesn't hit anything, and we look at the very center of the beam, we get what's called a bright field image. And what we're seeing here is where it's bright is where the electron beam is passed through, and where it's dark is where we see scattering and those electrons were knocked out of the path and so they're not seen by the detector. With dark field, we get some interesting differences in the data. So what we're looking at here is the beam has been uh, scattered and the dark field image is just the opposite, as you would imagine. Uh, where we see dark images is where no deflected electron is seen or no deflected wave is seen. And where we see bright images, that is where a deflected um, electron will come in contact with the, connect with the detector. We have the ability to look at uh, dark field one, which is lightly um, scattered electrons or waves, or HADF, which stands for high angle dark field or high angular annular dark field and we see those electrons that are scattered at a much higher angle. So with the TIM imaging mode as we mentioned we also have bright field and dark field as well and this differs from STEM in that if we go back to the original description STEM is basically very much like a TV tube where we're scanning back and forth Tim, the best example I can give is if you think back to high school, if you're my age or, or, or older, of those transparencies teacher would you use. And you're basically uh, putting a, a, a shape over a illuminated light source, which allows you to look at the shadow and that signal, which then gets magnified onto a screen. Same thing as what's going on with Tim. It's a flood of a wide area, electrons over an area. And we're not scanning it back and forth, we're just illuminating the whole area. So again, bright field is a little simpler when we're looking at that. We're only looking at those electrons that are coming directly through. And this gives us a really good mix of all the beams and allows us to have high contrast and, and, and good data. Um, dark field is really great for looking at the structure and looking at for things that may be uh, disassociated. So, you know, again, we're looking for those scattered electrons and we're looking for those that may identify a defect or a crystalline structure. We get great information about the, uh, the structure itself and the crystallate, whether it's crystalline or not, or the diffraction. So I want to stop and talk a little bit about the contrast mechanisms that we see in bright field and dark field. And there are some interesting things that go on in the chem world. So the first and basic one is we get amplitude contrast. And this is really comes from either the elemental composition, you know, a larger atom, a larger nucleus to that atom is gonna have more diffraction and it's gonna scatter the beam in a greater amount. So, so those images can, those areas can look darker than say a lighter element. Also the mass, so the sample thickness, and we'll talk about that later, but the sample preparation and the sample thickness can have a direct influence on whether your image looks darker or lighter. Uh, the second one is the phase. We have to remember we're dealing kind of in the quantum mechanic world where these electrons can be treated as either a particle or a wave. And we see contrast mechanisms that are dealt with from the sample interaction with the crystalline structure. So you can get just like a wave in a pond, you can get constructive or destructive interference which can impact the nature of what you see and the contrast that's made up. All TIM images have a combination of amplitude and phase contrast. They are, they are existent in the entire uh, image, but it's important to know uh, what your structure is and that will give you some information as to how you should interpret your data and look at it. 